Hello everybody, welcome back to another tutorial. Uh, I got this question from one of the subscribers. Uh, he's asking what will the shape of the shear force and bending moment diagrams look like for a beam with a uniformly distributed load and two concentrated forces. So let's take a look at the beam he's referring to. Uh, I believe that's uh, that's the way I translated the a question into a drawing, so that's a beam with a uniformly distributed load with two concentrated loads. So we will basically go ahead and draw the shear force and bending moment diagrams uh, for the following beam and we'll try to do it in two different ways. Okay, so the solution, basically first we need to get the reactions. Uh, th uh, by now guys, I think you should be able to get the reactions for uh, uh, this beam without going into so much details uh, the way you can think of it uh, these uh, two concentrated loads can be carried by uh, I mean the 10 kilonewtons on the left can be carried by the left support and the 10 kilonewtons on the right will be carried by the right support and then we take a look at the distributed load then uh, we concentrate it uh, by multiplying the value or the magnitude of the load by the length of the distribution which is the total length of the beam so we have 5 multiplied by 9 that will give us a 45 kilonewtons and half of it will go to the left and half of it will go to the right so we have 10 uh, on the left 10 on the right plus half of the 45 on the left and half of the 45 on the right so AY and BY, AY should be 10 plus 45 over 2, that will give us 32.5 kilonewtons. The same thing goes for the reaction at point B. Okay, so we are ready. This is our beam with the reactions on, the, on it. And now we can go ahead and draw the shear and bending moment diagram. For the shear, we start by going up from, uh, at the left support by a value of 32.5 then I'm decrease, uh, I will be decreasing this value at a constant rate of 5 kN per meter so after 3 meters I'm gonna be at a value which is 17.5 and if you do the math that's 32.5 minus the load 5 multiplied by the distance 3 so basically it's 32.5 minus 15 and that should give me the value of the shear force at this location. Then the concentrate load would, will come into play. It will try to push, actually it will push me down uh, with a value of 10 kilonewtons from the 17.5. So currently I'm at 17.5. I'll be pushed down 10 units uh, downwards. So that will get me to a value of 7.5. After the concentrated load, I will be decreasing again on a constant rate of 5 kN per meter. And if you do the math again, you will end up uh, going down by a value of 15 kN from the value of positive 7.5. So you will say 7.5 minus the 15 will get you to a value in the negative region of minus 7.5 then the other concentrated load which is the 10 kilonewton will push me down 10 units to negative 17.5 and again decreasing at a constant rate I will get to a value here of negative 32.5 and looking at the shape of the loading or the, the pattern of the loading on the original beam I see uh, it's uh, symmetrical about uh, the middle so I, I'm expecting, I should be expecting the shear force diagram to be symmetrical about the middle as well. Now from this shear moment, uh, from the shear diagram, I will be able to construct the bending moment diagram. And we can do this by calculating the area under the segments of the shear force diagram. So we start with this area, this is the trapezoid. This trapezoidal area can be calculated by the area could will be the 32.5 plus the 17 
0.5 divided by 2 then multiply by the base which is 3 and that will give me 75 kilonewton meter and that's the value of the uh, moment at uh, or uh, after 3 meters from the left support then I'll go ahead and calculate this area the area this is just an area of a triangle and can be calculated at as half of the base times the height plus I need to add it to the previous value of the moment so I can get the moment at the middle or at the mid span if I do this I'll get a value of 80.625 kilonewtons meters okay and since it's symmetrical about uh, the middle I, uh, I don't I, do, I will not be um, worrying about the values of the moments after you know after the mid span because uh, they will be repeated especially the first one I mean the, fir the second one is at exactly at the middle but the first value of 75 kilonewtons meter will be repeated again so this is the general shape of the moment and the value here is 75 kilonewtons meter and the value here is 80.625 kilonewton meter and uh, the value here again because it's symmetrical it's 75 kilonewton meters okay so that's basically answers the question to the to uh, the subscribers okay now I, we will try to look at it into in a different way the way I'm gonna look at it is by dividing the beam into two separate beams and applying what is known as the superposition principle so this is our original beam what I mean by dividing is that this beam can be divided into this beam plus that beam and the superposition says if you are able to get the reactions from the first beam and the reactions from the second beam just add them and that will give you the reactions of the original beam same thing goes for the shear force diagrams or the shear force values in general if you know the shear force at a location X and the first beam and the shear force at the same location X but on the second beam if you know if you add these two shear forces values you will get the shear force at distance X at the original beam so what we're trying to do is doing it graphically by constructing the shear force and bending moment diagrams for the two beams then we say that the shear force diagram from beam 1 can be added to the shear force diagram from beam 2 to get the final shear force diagram the same thing goes for the bending moment diagram okay so let's do this so these are my two beams and now I'll be ready to basically go ahead and uh, draw the shear force and bending moment diagrams for these two beams of course you need the reactions but for these simple beams it's very easy to calculate the reaction uh, for example for the beam on the left the left support uh, gonna take 10 which uh, you can think about, about in a way you can think that the left support can take the left concentrated load and the right support will take the right concentrated load so each support will carry 10 and for the beam on the right we can concentrate the force in the middle by multiplying 5 times 9 then dividing it by 2 and that will give us the reactions for these supports so let's start with the beam on the left so we start by going up then uh, the value of, uh, of this segment is 10 since there there is no sh uh, forces between this point and the next point we go in a straight line we will be pushed down by value 10 so now we are at value 0 kilonewton newton between the two concentrated forces then I'm gonna be pushed 10 again then going to the right again I'm gonna be pushed upwards the reaction at B which we decided on uh, on which was 10 kilonewtons uh, upward okay for the uh, second beam the, the one on the right will go up a value of uh, 5 multiplied by 9 divided by 2 which is 22.5 and then I'm gonna be decreasing a constant rate of 5 kilonewtons for each foot or I mean 5 kilonewtons for each uh, meter and if I do the math that's 5 times 9 then I subtract the value from 
22.5 and that will get me to a value here of negative 22.5 which is the second support reaction okay Th this will close my shear force diagram we go back for the uh, first beam we draw the moment diagram the value of the moment at this point equals the area under the uh, rectangle which is 10 multiplied by 3 which will give us a value of 30 no uh, no shear diagram or no area to calculate in the middle so it goes straight and the area at the end is negative to the first area so it should close our moment diagram and uh, for a simply supported beam with a uniform distributed load I know the sh general shape of the uh, moment diagram it looks it will look something like this you can get the maximum value in the middle two ways you can calculate the area of the triangle which is one half times 22.5 times the base which is 3 plus 1.5 which is 4.5 or you can memorize the uh, equation for the maximum moment value for a simply supported beam with a uniformly distributed load which says that the m max equals w multiply by L square the whole thing divide by 8 do it either way you'll get a value of 50.625 now we're ready to add the shear diagram or the values of the shear forces from the first beam to the second beam and the same thing for the bending moments so let's take a look at this on the left I'm gonna add the shear forces and on the right I'm gonna add the moment okay so this is the shear diagram from the second beam and this is the moment diagram from the second beam so let's start by adding the values at, uh, from the shear forces I'm assuming here that you know guys how to get the shear value whenever we have this uh, small vertical lines intersect the shear diagram okay so you know the 22.5 from before and the negative 22.5 and you should be able to get the 7.5 and the seven point f uh, the negative points uh, negative seven point five same thing applies for uh, the moment diagram I'm assuming that you know how to get the value of the moment at any location X you can do this just by s simply by calculating the area under the shear force diagram okay and let's start by adding the shear uh, forces for the, uh, for the two beams so we start with this segment which has a value of 22.5 plus the 10 that will give me 32.5 then I move to the second part or to the second value the second value from the first draw uh, from the first graph says it's still 10 because I have a, a horizontal line but from the uh, uh, second graph I have a value of 7.5 so I add 10 to the 7.5 to get a value and which is 17.5 but keep in mind at the second location looking at the first graph I have two values for the shear I have a 10 and a 0 so I'm gonna add the 10 to the 7.5 to get a value then I'm gonna add the 0 to the 7.5 to get the second value so I'm here to add the 10 to the 7.5 which will give me 17.5 then at the same location I'm gonna add the 0 to the 7.5 and that will give me 7.5 which is right here okay then what I do I go to the following point and do the same thing the following point from the first graph I have two values a 0 and a negative 10 and from the second graph I have one value which is negative 7.5 so first I start with the 0 plus negative 7.5 and that will give me negative 7.5 then I'll add the negative 10 to the negative 7.5 and that will give me a value of negative 17.5 then at the very end I'll add the minus 10 to the minus 22.5 and I'll get a value here of minus 32.5 and that will close my shear 
force diagram and now you can tell we are getting exactly the same uh, sh uh, shear force diagram as we did before now let's jump to the moment diagrams the, uh, the moment we can go ahead and add the first point is basically 0 plus 0 it's 0 the second point it's 45 plus 30 or looking at, uh, at it from top to bottom it's 30 plus 45 and that will give me the 75 then I'm gonna add the 30 again to the 50.625 and that will give me 80.625 and then I'm gonna add the 30 to the 45 and that will give me 75 kilonewtons meters uh, this technique is very very powerful if you are doing a beam with a really complicated loading I mean if you are good in drawing the shear and force uh, shear force and bending moment diagrams just go ahead and go slowly by doing it the old traditional way but you can uh, learn a lot by dividing the beam to know at least which kind of loading creates the maximum shear or the maximum moment on your beam okay i i hope that answers the questions and uh, i hope to see you again in another tutorial thank you